In this video, we're going to bring together all the different factoring strategies we have seen so far to see if we can decide, given a random factoring problem, which strategy to use. Now, something that I've been trying to stress a lot in several of these videos is the first thing we always look for, regardless of the problem, the first thing we look for is we always factor the greatest common factor first. This is an important key that cannot be stressed enough. Always factor the GCF first, regardless of the problem. Now, sometimes there isn't a GCF, but always check for it first. After that, we decide what we do next based on the number of terms in the problem. If there's two terms, we're thinking about our factoring tricks. We might have a difference of squares. That was your a squared minus b squared. That factored to the sum and difference of the square roots, a plus b times a minus b. The other option with two terms is you might have cubes. Um, that was your a cubed either plus or minus b cubed. And that would factor to uh, the cube roots, and then we would square, multiply together, and then square the last term. Now, uh, we'd use soap to decide that it was the same sign as the problem, either plus or minus, the opposite sign, minus or plus, and the last one was always positive. So two terms, we're thinking factoring tricks. With three terms, maybe it was a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. With two term, I'm sorry, with three terms, I'm thinking more along the lines of first checking, do I have a perfect square? A perfect square would be something like a squared plus or minus ab, 2ab, sorry, plus b squared. And that would always factor to something squared. The square root of the first term, the sine from the middle, and then the square root from the last term. If it wasn't a perfect square, we used a reverse foil, often called guess and check, to kind of work our way at the solution. And this probably took the most critical thinking skills because there was a little bit of, well, we can't have a GCF in the binomials, we can't. Uh, we have several ways that we can multiply to this number or that number, what order do they go in? So that was problems like x squared minus x minus 12, where we said, well, first times first has to equal first, x times x. Last times last had to equal last, maybe 3 times 4. The outsides and insides had to add to the middle term, so we would know it would be plus 3 and minus 4. Reverse FOIL. If there are four terms, what we would do is we would basically use grouping. Now, grouping was a problem like AB plus AC plus DB plus DC, where we would look at the left side and say there's a GCF of A, look at the right side, there's a GCF of D, and then, hey, the binomials match, so we could pull the binomial out front, b plus c times a plus d. And so that's kind of all the different factoring methods we've looked at. We always do the GCF first, always, always, always. And then if there's two terms, we're thinking tricks. If there's three terms, it's either a perfect square or reverse FOIL guess and check. And if there's four terms, we use grouping. So let's take a look at some problems and decide which method we will use. Um, on these, we're not going to actually uh, factor them. We're just going to say, what method would we use? I was hoping they'd all fit in one screen, so I'm going to squeeze them up here a bit. There we go. So, uh, which method would we use on 25x squared minus 16? First, look for a GCF. There isn't one. And now, there are two terms, so I'm thinking shortcuts. This two terms has a square in it. 
square means we're going to use the difference of squares shortcut to factor this problem. In example two, we see first no GCF, and then this time there's one, two, three terms. Three terms, we check, hey, is it a perfect square? Can we take the square root of 20? No, we can't take the square root of 20. So we must be using the reverse FOIL, or maybe you call it guess and check, to work our way to the binomials that would multiply to that. In example three, we have one, two, three, four terms. When there's four terms, after looking for the GCF, in this case there isn't one, when there's four terms, we will always use grouping in order to factor it, where we split it down the middle, look at the left and right sides, and then continue on from there. So that's kind of the strategy we use to decide which method to factor. GCF first, two terms, it's either a difference of squares or cubes, three terms, it's either perfect square or reverse foil, four terms, we'll use grouping.